Hello, it's Paul, your geriatric gardener back again. It's time to sow seeds that will give us flowers in the spring and next summer. But first, a little mistake I've got to own up to. Out in the rewilding area, some of the bushes aren't doing too well. I planted some bushes way back in the spring, but I didn't take enough grass away from them. So what's happened is, this is the bush, and its roots are down here under the ground but the grass its roots only go a couple of inches below the ground and they as it rains they take up all the nutrient which should be going down to the roots of the bush and so the bushes really haven't come on as much as out of light what I've got is these jute mulch mats made out of um, coffee bean bags. Right, firstly, let's look at some of the equipment we're going to employ. First of all, very useful, this potting tray. Now, before I go any further, all these items that I'm going to show you are available from Amazon and you can go directly to the products if you go to the website mentioned at the end of the program. Now, these are very useful. Something that once you've got your seedling growing, you can put these into the ground and they will decompose so there's no need for repotting and therefore no chance of damage to the roots. And then, of course, if you don't want to spend the money, you can always use one of these. A toilet roll hole uh, core. Just click at the bottom there. Fold those in on themselves like that and you've got the same thing a pot that will decompose once it's dug into the earth and finally eco-friendly plant labels Unfortunately, the people who sell these can't spell the word labels. But once again, you can find out all about them on my website at the end of the program. Okay, let's take let's start with the pea fan. First of all, these are the pods from the white sweet peas that I'm, I grew here this summer. So anything we get from these will be totally totally free plants nothing like free plants and of course the best thing about sowing them now is that they'll have developed a strong plant and roots before the winter season sets in so you'll be weeks ahead in the summer and they'll be flowering a good month before seeds that are sown in March or April. I think that should be enough for now. So what I've got here is a mixture 50-50 of compost and grit. Bear in mind that sweet peas are notorious for having a long root run. And the beauty of these little pots is that once they're plant, planted on, you don't have to disturb that root and it should be able to grow through the bottom. We'll have to see if that's new, but we'll put one in each pot. I'm 
when I've finished I will I will um, sit these in a a tray of water for an hour then to suck up some moisture and then I'll put them on a windowsill until they've germinated. those down a little bit, mark them up, Now I'm doing the same thing with coloured ones, a mixed set of sweet pea, which should make a very nice contrast to the uh, white ones I've already sewn. So we'll do the same with these. What about colour in the winter? I'm going to sow some pansy seeds now and once they're in flower, they should stay giving wonderful colour right the way through winter. Back to summer and back to the rewilding. This is Verbena bonariensis. This is a perennial wildflower and I shall grow these as seedlings and then plant them out as plugs in the spring. And the same goes for yellow rattle. We talked about this in a previous episode. This is this wonderful plant which actually feeds off the nutrients in the roots of the grass and therefore keeps the growth of grass down to manageable proportions and allows everything else to prosper. Now the verbena and yellow rattle of course are wildflowers and they're used to spending a winter in freezing conditions before germinating. So I'm trying to copy nature a bit by putting these seeds in the deep freeze for a week or so. When I take them out, when I take them out and the dog's finished mucking about, they'll germinate more quickly. Now the pea family isn't just sweet peas and edible peas. Lupins are a member of the same family. As you can see, their seeds are in pods very similar. Let's see what we've got inside. Well, the seeds are much smaller, as you can see. About half the size are sweet pea seeds, but there's no reason why they shouldn't just grow as well. And lovely to have a crop of new lupins ready to plant out in the spring. Well that's about all we have time for today. Next time I'll be making a cold frame, once again upcycling bits and pieces. So if you have been, and I know you have, thanks for watching. Cheers! <laughs>